I'm Dr. Frank Andrews from Louisiana State University School of Veterinary Medicine. Gastric ulcers are common in horses. The only definitive diagnosis is endoscopy of the stomach. In this program, we will review the anatomic regions of the equine stomach and the materials and methods necessary for performing standing gastroscopy in the horse. Step one, preparation prior to scoping. In preparation for a standing gastroscopy, horses must be held off feed for a period of 12 to 16 hours before the procedure. A longer period may be required in some cases. Water should be withheld for a minimum of four hours. Feed, hay, and grain are removed from the stall and the stall cleaned of all bedding by 8 p.m. the evening before the gastroscopy. If bedding cannot be removed for any reason, the horse should be muzzled. If the horse is transported to an equine hospital, make sure that there is no hay in the horse trailer or float prior to shipment. The equipment needed for examination of the stomach in standing horses include a fiber optic or video endoscope, a video monitor, video processor, light source, a small air compressor for insufflation of the stomach, a suction device for aspiration of residual gastric fluid contents and to decompress the stomach at the end of the procedure, and a bucket of tap water for gastric lavage. The endoscope is 3 meters long and 9 to 13 millimeters in diameter and is equipped with a blue air water feed valve and a red suction valve. To start the air pump, depress the power and air buttons on the front panel of the illuminator. Place a finger over the opening of the blue air control vent to release air from the end of the endoscope for insufflation. Depressing the blue valve fully releases water from the end of the endoscope to aid in cleaning debris from the lens located at the tip of the scope. The endoscope is equipped with a biopsy channel so that when needed, special instruments may be inserted into the channel to perform a biopsy or for foreign body retrieval. You can attach a 60 mil syringe filled with water to the biopsy channel and gently inject. You can also attach a water pump to the biopsy channel. Both techniques can be used in field conditions to wash adherent digesta off the stomach wall. To perform a thorough examination of the equine stomach, the tip of the endoscope should be capable of bending 180 degrees in all directions. Before moving the left, right, and up, down deflection control or articulation knobs, the brakes must be released by rotating them in a clockwise direction. Slowly rotate the larger up, down articulation knob counterclockwise to move the flexible tip of the endoscope upward. Rotate clockwise to move the tip downward. The smaller knob controls the scope's side-to-side -side movements. A clockwise turn moves the tip to the right, and a counterclockwise turn moves the tip to the left. Do not force the deflection control knobs. Excessive force could damage the endoscope and may cause patient injury. The endoscope is also equipped with a suction connector. A suction device can be attached to aspirate excess fluid and air from the stomach. To activate the device, turn on the suction pump and depress the red button on the top of the endoscope handle. Now that you are familiar with the equipment, you are ready to perform standing gastroscopy in the horse. Step two, restraint and tranquilization. Restrain the horse in stocks or some other suitable station. It's very important to adequately sedate the horse to allow passage of the endoscope into the nostril. Adult horses are typically administered 200 milligrams of xylazine IV and given approximately 15 minutes to allow maximum sedation effects. In some horses, 0.7 to 0.8 mils of detomidine, either alone or with 5 to 10 milligrams of butorphanol, can be administered for sedation. Once the horse is sedated adequately, the endoscopic procedure can be performed with or without a twitch, depending on the temperament of the horse. It takes at least three people to perform a thorough endoscopic examination. One person holds the horse's head, one passes the endoscope, and the third person manipulates the endoscope controls. Step three, endoscopic technique. A lubricated length of stomach tube may be first passed and positioned in either the proximal or distal esophagus as a conduit for the gastroscope. This will prevent retroflexion of the scope into the mouth and subsequent destruction by chewing. To begin the gastroscopy, 
remove the endoscope from its position on the cart, and apply a water-soluble lubricant to the distal 4 to 6 inches of the endoscope. Do not apply to the tip of the endoscope as it may cover the lens and obstruct the view. After lubrication, pass the endoscope into the ventral portion of the middle meatus of the nasal cavity or through the outer stomach tube. Wait until the scope is in the nostril to turn on the light source. This decreases the likelihood of frightening the horse with bright light. Pass the endoscope approximately 20 centimeters into the nostril to view the back of the pharynx. The nasal pharynx cannot be seen if the scope is passed through the outer stomach tube. Orient the scope in a dorsal ventral position by viewing the anatomic structures of the pharynx. Also notice the tongue-shaped epiglottis at the 6 o'clock position directly ventral to the arytenoid cartilages and opening to the trachea. Notice the opening to the guttural pouches at the 2 and 10 o'clock positions. Dorsal to the guttural pouches is the dorsal pharyngeal recess. Once you've correctly oriented the dorsal ventral position, gently move the endoscope forward so that the tip is dorsal to the rima glottis. Depress the air feed water feed button to stimulate swallowing. Once the horse swallows, gently pass the endoscope into the proximal esophagus. At this point, make every effort to confirm that the endoscope is in the esophagus. To accomplish this, gently blow air or water through the scope to distend the esophagus. If you cannot see the esophagus, immediately withdraw the scope into the nasal pharynx and reintroduce it as it may be in the oral cavity and at risk of being crushed. Once you've identified the esophagus, pass the endoscope toward the stomach by gently pressing on the air feed, water feed button. The esophagus will distend, making it easy to pass through. You should encounter resistance at approximately 180 centimeters due to the presence of the muscular cardiac sphincter or lower esophageal sphincter. Gentle air pressure will facilitate passage of the endoscope into the stomach. Once the endoscope enters the stomach, attach the air compressor to the biopsy channel and distend the stomach. It is crucial that the stomach be distended adequately so that the rugae or folds of the stomach disappear. To improve the examination of the stomach, a water pump or 60 cc syringe can be attached. Tap water is then flushed through the biopsy channel to wash away any food material adhering to the stomach mucosa. This allows a better view of any ulcers present. At this time, you may also aspirate excess fluid from the stomach. Simply attach the suction hose to the suction connector on the endoscope. Then aspirate the gastric juice into the attached bottle by depressing the red button located on the top of the endoscope handle. Approximately 5 to 10 millimeters of water pressure is needed to aspirate the fluid from the stomach. Once you have aspirated fluid, distend the stomach again using the air compressor attached to the biopsy channel. Just dorsal to the greater curvature is the saccus cecus, blind sac, or proventricular region of the stomach. This region is non-glandular and covered by stratified squamous epithelium. This region rarely contains ulcers, however, you should examine it and use it to confirm correct orientation of the endoscope. Once you have observed the saccus cecus, move the endoscope ventrally to view the greater curvature of the stomach. This region of the stomach is covered by white, glistening, stratified squamous epithelium dorsally and by the pink or red glandular mucosa ventrally. An irregular raised cuticular ridge or margo placatus separates these two regions of the stomach. Yellowing or reddening of the squamous mucosa could indicate hyperkeratosis or hyperemia, while reddening of the glandular mucosa indicates hyperemia. Changes in the color may also be accompanied by irregular changes in the thickness of the mucosa signifying hyperkeratosis. In some cases, hyperemia may be caused by the scope as it abrades the mucosa during passage. The distal 10 centimeters of the endoscope is flexible and can be controlled by the operator. Therefore, large areas can be scanned from one position. For a better view of the stomach, flush tap water through the biopsy channel using a water pump or 60 cc syringe. Although not present in this horse, bots are commonly seen in the non-glandular and glandular mucosa at the margo placatus. Gastric ulcers are commonly found in horses along the greater curvature at the margo placatus. 
Images or video of the stomach or other regions can be captured by depressing buttons on the endoscope. The endoscopic equipment can be fitted with an image capture system so that images and video can be saved on a flash drive for future viewing and distribution to clients. Some equipment can be plugged directly into a laptop or a cell phone via a USB cable, and images or video can be captured directly from the endoscope. Once you can see the endoscope exiting the esophageal opening, the lesser curvature can then be viewed. At this time, insufflation may be necessary for a better view of the lesser curvature. Make a complete examination of the lesser curvature of the stomach. Include examination of the non-glandular and glandular mucosa at the margo placatus. Pay close attention to the area under the lip of the lesser curvature. Gastric ulcers may be present in this region. After viewing the lesser curvature, direct the scope ventrally to examine the pyloric antrum. Because of the anatomic orientation of the esophagus and pylorus directly beneath it, you must pass the endoscope along the greater curvature, across the margo placatus, and down toward the pyloric antrum. Gently manipulating the scope backward and forward, combined with the peristaltic action of the horse's stomach, propels the endoscope toward the pyloric antrum. This may involve diving below the fluid line and then angling up into the pyloric antrum. In an average size, 500 to 600 kilogram horse, the pylorus is usually found at about 2.6 meters. The endoscopist may encounter difficulties in viewing the pyloric antrum due to the presence of feed material and gastric fluid in the fundus. Gastric lesions secondary to stress or the use of non anti-inflammatory agents commonly occur in the pyloric region of the stomach. It is extremely important to examine this part of the stomach in a routine gastroscopy. It is also important to note that lesions may exist in this region independent of the squamous part of the stomach. With an endoscope measuring at least 2.75 meters in length, you can examine the proximal duodenum for lesions. Note the green bile seen in the view of the duodenum. Notice the smooth pink mucosa of the proximal duodenum. Gastrophilus nasalis spots are commonly seen in this area. When you have finished examining the stomach, you can aspirate the residual air left in the stomach after insufflation. After viewing the pyloric antrum, slowly withdraw the scope. As it passes outward, look for the presence of ulcers in the esophagus. Gently dilate the esophagus with air as the scope exits for better visualization. In some procedures, iatrogenic hemorrhage caused by trauma from the endoscope may be present in the stomach or esophagus. If the scope has been passed through a pre-placed stomach tube, the tube should be removed by pulling gently downward parallel to the direction of the nasal bone to avoid a nosebleed. Step four, recovering the horse. Once gastroscopy is completed, the horse is returned to a stall and allowed to recover from the sedation, which takes approximately one hour. Once awake, the horse can be fed. Observe the horse for approximately five minutes after eating has begun to make sure it does not choke or suffer an esophageal obstruction. After these initial observations, the horse's normal diet can resume. Potential complications of the gastroscopy examination include colic signs from gas left in the stomach or duodenum, nosebleeds, and in rare cases, small intestinal volvulus. Treatment for mild colic should include passing a nasogastric tube to relieve gas in the stomach, and in some cases, treatment with analgesics and spasmolytics, such as buscopan. Nosebleeds are usually self-limiting. Step five, cleaning the endoscope. Following the procedure, the endoscope should be cleaned with an enzyme detergent to remove large contaminants and mucus. The biopsy channel should be flushed and the scope checked for leaks before soaking in an enzyme wash for one to two hours. The endoscope guide for care and cleaning should be consulted for proper care and cleaning procedures. We hope this video has been helpful and will assist you in the diagnosis of equine gastric ulcer syndrome. Thank you for watching.